We're chatting on Fox Local with May Pang. I'm so excited to meet you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So first time in Texas. I first mean, time in yeah. Texas. I'm thrilled. What do you think of Texas so far? So far, everybody's been really sweet and kind. So yeah. I'm I'm good. Okay. I'm, so for those who don't know, uh, you had several year relationship with John Lennon. You knew him before that. You knew him after that. Yeah. Uh, the relationship. Ten years. Ten years. Ten yeah. years. Uh, over the years, this this relationship has been called the Lost Weekend. Yes. Which a lot of people <laughs> think is literally just two days. No, no, very long. That's what this movie's all about. So they get a chance to really find out about us, about John and I, and what we did during that whole time period. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about this gallery. We're at AO5 Gallery, North Austin, in the Arboretum. You're showing off your, your, your photographs of John over the years. What's your favorite one? That's kind of hard to say. These okay. are my babies, you know? Come <laughs> what on. What was John's favorite? Let's start there. Well, let's start. John's favorite is a photo I took of him over on this side. And it's called, you know, it's a, a walk in the wilderness. And we were walking, we were spending a weekend up in Ellenville, New York, and for those people they, that know, I actually met people who come from that area, that it's near Woodstock. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. We were walking up uh, the road, um, and we borrowed a friend's place and for the weekend, and we were saying, he was showing us the trails, and it's his, the two dogs are my friend's dogs. They were Shazam and Delilah, <laughs> like they look like wolves. And we're walking up, and I thought, what a beautiful setting, because it was fall, and fall, you know, in New York is great. So I just yelled out to him, and he turned around, and there, you know, that's the, the shot that I took. I only do one shot. I mean, can you imagine? I didn't even do it from safeties. And John loved it so much, he asked me if he could use it for his 45 singles cover of Imagine being released in England at the time in 1975. And even better, I found out that when he released it, it was on my birthday that year. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, I asked you about these pictures on TV. Pardon me. I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. Uh, this one right here, very important picture. This was, this is John and Paul. What John had happened Paul. the night before you took this picture? Oh, the night before. They happened, um, they, meaning Paul and Linda, they happened to come um, to the studio where John was producing Harry Nielsen, the Pussycats album. And we were doing playback, and all of a sudden I look up, and walking through the door was Paul and Linda. And I went, oh. And I'm mouthing Paul and Linda, and John read my lips, and he's going, what? And he turned around, and, and they both looked at one, and they go, hey, hey, hey. you know. <laughs> like they saw each other, and I don't mean it for the pun intended, but like yesterday. Yeah. But, um, and they hadn't seen each other in about five years at that point. So it was uh, just a fun time. They ended up jamming. Everybody was just, uh, you know, drunk and whatever afterwards. <laughs> But me and Mal Evans, you know, the old roadie, and we got a chance along with uh, Stevie Wonder, we got to jam. So this was their last time they actually played together. So I'm on the last jam playing tambourines. You were on the last jam yeah. of what is considered like the Mozart and Beethoven of our time. Basically. Oh, well, you know, I mean, was I lucky? But did I think it was? No, but there it was. Yeah, did you? Yeah, that's a good question. Did, you didn't know how special this was at the time. No, not at all. Everything I've done, has always been, okay, did, you know, people would say, did you realize this was, yeah. you know, this historic? I said, no. You do it, you're in the moment, you say, okay, I take the photo, and I keep moving. And I do things, and I keep moving, and I, and it's only later that you find out that, oh my God, that, that was it. Yeah. You know? Okay, we talked about this one on TV too, but this is a big one. Uh, yeah. You two were at Disney World, and John's like, hey, uh, take some pictures of me signing this document. Yes. He goes, here it is, you know, and he does this whole thing. And, you know, we were supposed to sign it in New York a few days earlier. And uh, John wasn't happy with a, a couple of points in the uh, contract. And so they, had, they were quickly trying to maneuver and, and make it right. And uh, when they finally got it all done, we were down in Disney World with Julian Lennon mm -hmm. uh, doing our Christmas uh, 1974. And, oh, that's another myth. Uh, John and I did not break up. Uh, in, in after the Elton John concert, we were still together. We were down in um, in Florida, and the lawyers brought down the contracts, and that's the beginning of it, that's of great. signing it. So that's signing of, of the dissolution of the Beatles. Yes, it was a whole, a lot of components to the breakup because it's also the companies and the and the publishing and the film, and who was getting what. So it was a lot. Yeah. 
Uh, I watched the documentary this week, The Lost Week, and it's on Prime. I rented it on Prime. Uh, one of the things that I learned is that you you helped mend that relationship between John and Julian. Let's check out yeah, this picture there, right yeah. here. Uh, Julian is, is John's son from his first wife, Cynthia. Yeah. Cynthia and I became very, very close. And, um, and I just thought for John, and I said this to him, you need to be with your son. And, you know, he was nervous. And I said, you need to see him. You know, a 10-year-old kid at that point needs both parents. And um, I made it easy. Yeah. I made it easy so he could deal with, with them, and, and it was great. So he kept coming back every time he wanted to have time with his dad, and I made him call his son every weekend as well. Yeah, because before you were in your relationship, when you were just working for John and Yoko, he had called, and Yoko told you to tell him he's not there. That's correct. So when people see the movie, they'll see this was all the stuff that was going on, what it's like working and what it's like to being with somebody. Right. And do you still keep up with Julian? Every so often, you know, the, you know, on his new Jude album, yeah. the cover of his uh, album, that's my that's photo. Cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, cool. What else do you want to show us? This, well, is you, this is you, by the way. That is me. I handed the camera to, in those days, we didn't have things like a selfie. You know, right. so I handed the camera <laughs> to a friend and said, hey, will you take... I'm never in any of these photos, so that's about where it goes, you know? Yeah. So there's a lot of good ones in here. One of my other favorite ones, why don't we go over here. Here's John, and this is a, called A Face in the Crowd. Okay. And I said to him, how do you feel that we're in such a crowded, you know, time in Disney World? And he said, it doesn't bother me because people are just looking to go to the next ride. And if you look, no one even notices it's him. <laughs> so I took that photo from behind, so he had no idea. Did anyone notice the entire time? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, but there was a great story. I'm sitting in, in the monorail with the people out we were with, and I'm sitting, and on the other side of me, I heard this father lean over saying, son, I just heard there's a beetle, you know, in Disney World. And he goes, who is it, Dad? He goes, I think it's George Harrison. <laughs> and I burst out in laughter, and John's looking at me from across on the other side, and he goes, why are you laughing? And I said, so I told him the story, and he just started laughing. And the guy was getting up to, to get out at his stop, and he just looked at us like, what are you guys <laughs> laughing at? That's funny. Yeah. People need to practice spatial awareness. They need yeah, to look no, around no. them. <laughs> um, wow. And uh, then, you know, it's, it's crazy. But, you know, you, if you look at all the photos, these are our home photos, you know. And there's a lot of photos where you see him swimming. That was his love. He loved to be in the water. The water. Yeah. Let's talk about the jeans photo one more time, and then oh, we'll say goodbye. Oh, the jeans, those jeans. The toy. First off, he loved that, that bike. No, he, it's not his. It was somebody, he kept coming back to it, and I finally said, just stand in front of it, and let me just take a photo of it. And he's wearing my jeans. I mean, I woke up one morning, and he goes, look. And I go, yeah. And I said, why are you wearing my jeans? <laughs> so he liked them, and so I lost it to him. And so he's wearing my jeans. Yeah. Something else I learned about you, and this didn't have anything to do with the pictures, but you were, you were on the recording of Happy, Happy Christmas. Yes. Y you're singing in the back. Oh, with, with all these kids, you know, we filled in, we did that. I'm also the voice that's on Number Nine Dream, so a lot of people yeah. had no idea that that's me. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, you know, every so often I fill in, and I just, you know, it was a lot of fun. John would say, come on in here, I need you. Right, <laughs> yeah. You, and you had production credits on albums. Like, you weren't just witness to history. You were part of it. Yeah, that's true. And I didn't think about it in that sense, you know. But, yeah, when you look back and everything, there's, it's, it's there, you know. Yeah. There's a lot more. Because yeah. um, I was around when they were talking about Paul is dead. Right. I was, just started my job at uh, the Alan Klein office, Apple, and the person called in. Uh, from a radio station, and I said, what are you talking about, Paul? Is that, I, we have no knowledge. And I called back to the office, and I said, will somebody take this call? They're talking about Paul. Is that, no, you deal with it. So the guy ended up talking to me. So when they, there's a story that says, oh, the radio station talked to somebody at Apple. Turned out it's me. <laughs> so I'm in all these little yeah. things that nobody yeah. even knew. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, which, by the way, people thought Paul McCartney was dead for some yeah. reason, and that he had signaled to his death and I am the walrus or yeah. something. It's some weird thing. Uh, let me put it this way. Paul's not dead. He's not dead. No. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> and he's on tour. Look he's at it. You're right. He's on tour. Uh, he's doing well for a dead guy. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk about your, your gallery here uh, and how I people can come. I think everybody should come down. This is the AO5 gallery here in Austin. And I'm here for the whole weekend, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
I'll be here. You can purchase any one of these photos, and I'll tell you stories, whatever you uh, ask. And if I can tell you whatever you want to, you know, the answer, I will. Yeah. So from here, you're going to San Antonio, and then if and then people miss both of these, they can still buy from your website. Yeah, absolutely. They can go on the rockartshow.com if they want to see the photos. Uh, after San Antonio, I go to Dallas, so I'm like all over the place all right now. Texas. Yeah. First time in Texas, just First doing time. a Texas tour. I love it. I mean, I'm having fun. I need to now eat barbecue. I got to go for a barbecue now. You got to do it. I know. So if you got some idea where I should go, let me know. You're in the right city for barbecue. Just skip it in San Antonio and Dallas. <laughs> well, there you go. Just give me the names and uh, I'll okay, see you. Okay, okay. I promise last question, then we'll wrap up. Okay. Uh, another thing I learned in the documentary is John was very free with the media while he was around, while he was with you. He wasn't really like that with Yoko. You kind of think, think of John Lennon as this elusive guy, uh, but he was inviting reporters to the house, journalists to the house. Uh, do you think he would have invited me to the house? What would, I, what would I have had to say to John or, or do to John to get him to invite me to his house? Mm, it wouldn't be that hard. Because I'll tell you, you know, Dennis Elsus, who did one of the famous uh, from WNEW in New York, uh, did an interview because he contacted me, and who I knew, um, and he said, uh, do you think John would do an interview with me? I said, I'll get him to do it. Great. And He's had to know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. May Peng, this has been amazing. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Fox Local.